Hello and welcome to a new Google Sheets video in Practical Sheets. Today we're going to do a checkbox primer, checkbox 101. I'm going to tell you all about the checkbox. What is it? How to include it? What are the options and some examples of some of their limitations? Some examples of when can we use it and uh, more. But before we begin, you can download the template for these and more than 90 videos in the channel going to the Patreon page where you can also ask me any question about any of the projects. You can see the videos one week earlier and much, much more. If not, just a subscription to the channel is really great support. So let's begin. What is a checkbox? A checkbox is a type of data validation. Data validation is nothing more than restricting what can you enter in a cell. Normally, when you go to a cell in Google Sheets or in Excel, you can input anything you want. You can input a letter, a text, a formula, a date, and that's about it. With data validation, we can restrict what the user inputs. This has two implications or two advantages. One for the user, it makes it easier. If I tell him, hey, in this cell, you can put true or false, it's easier than say, hey, what do you think? It's like when you answer a quiz and it has to be an open-end question that you can write anything you want. But if you give the user three options, it's more likely that he will answer. So it's good for the user, for the interface, because it makes it easier for the user to respond. It also makes it more attractive and more, it calls more the attention a checkbox or a dropdown than simply a cell where you can write anything. This is the first advantage. The second advantage is for you as an administrator or as, an, or as the owner of the table, because now you know that the users will only enter one of two data. Or if you're using another type of data validation, like a dropdown, then you only know the users will have to choose between the 10, 20, 30 options. And you know that there won't be any mistake that the user puts two spaces or starts the, the word with a capital letter or whatever. You better control the input of the data. The checkbox is a type of data validation where you can choose between only two options, off or on. You either uncheck or check. That's it. So let's try it out. Let's, there, I'm going to show you a couple of ways to, to doing a checkbox. You just put in the cell, go insert and then checkbox. That's it. And here, this is what I'm telling you. It's a graphic, a more visual way to, to see two values. One value is when the check is on and the other value is when the check is off. A bit more zoom. By default, the value when the check is off is false. You can see it here, it's false. If you check it, the default value is true, okay? But we can change that. So where is it useful? For example, where something is yes or no answer. So no, it's unchecked and yes, it's checked. Um, for example, when you opt in to a newsletter, opt in, there are only two options or you opt in or you opt out. That's it. Any time where you have two options and it's easy to know when is switched off and when is switched in, this is a good time to use it, cancelled. Any question that is a yes or no answer, uh, has a purchase or not, is an active client or not, uh, is enrolled or not, enrolled. Any of these occasions is good to use the checkbox, okay? What you can do with the checkbox, you can try, you can use it as if it was any other text, you can copy it and then we can paste it here. And again, it's pasting two things. When I paste it here, I pasted the value that is true when it's on and the data validation that is what makes this to become a, a checkbox when it's true and just an empty box when it's false. Okay, so I showed you the first way to insert this. There's another way and is that we can hide these menus and here we can write check box and we can insert the checkbox and that's it. It's also easy. The other way is going to the data validation menu that it's a bit more, you need to do one extra step. Okay. 
right click, view more selections, data validation. And here in this data validation, I need to add a rule and say that this rule will be a checkbox. You see, I have to do like four steps. Whereas if I do insert checkbox, it's only one step. The other way is to go directly to data, data validation. Again, we add a rule. In criteria, we select checkbox and that's it. Okay. The thing is, here you can see that given that I didn't do any weird options, automatically the rules were grouped. So they it grouped the C3, F3 and the C4, D4. This means practically that, for example, if I, ha if I have a table, I'm going to delete this. If I have a table and I want this to be in all the column, so for this example, I'm going to delete all of these and create a new checkbox. There was another way that I didn't tell you is that if you already have opened the data validation rule, you, you just click this add rule and we're going to say that will be from A2 to A. And here we're going to choose the checkbox. And let's click that. Okay. So what I wanted to show you is that with just one rule, you can create checkbox for many rows. So this was different before this change in 2022. So uh, this is a thing that no, not everyone likes, but I, I think it's very practical. Okay, now let's see a bit of the options that we can have with checkbox. So I'm going to enter to my rule. Again, if you want to go to the rule, you can do right click, view more selections and data validation or simply data, data validation. Then you click on the rule. You could remove the rule if you want. I'm just going to click it and the first thing we can do is to use custom cell values if the visual part won't change why would you want to use custom cell values I'll give you an example let's use custom cell values and one option that is used among programmers is to use checked as one and unchecked as zero okay let's hit done and here you see that if i check it it's one and if i uncheck it it's zero why could you want this when this is especially useful when you're going to then do some reporting or summarizing data? It's very easy to know how many yes or how many boxes are checked with a one. It's just adding up. If you have here and here and here, and then you put a formula that is sum and you sum this, then you know that it's three. It's very, very easy. And other type of calculations can easily be done with the one and the zero. Okay, this is uh, one time where it could be useful. Another time is, for example, when then you're going to, to do some pivot tables or queries or graphs, maybe. Here, it doesn't make any sense, but when then when you're going to, uh, to do some a pivot table, for example, it may be better to put this, the checked as yes and the unchecked as no. Or in this case, the, sh the check would be opt-in. Or in this one, the check-in would be cancelled. Or in this, the check-in would be enrolled. And the, the checkout could be not enrolled or could be empty. Again, depending on the, on the math, on the summarizing you need to do, you could play with these items, with these values. Sometimes leaving this empty could work well with some types of for some type of formula. Or leaving it as zero and this as one, as I already showed you. Okay, so this is this could be very very useful. I use I use it a lot. Okay, now let's go to the advanced options. The first option is to show help desk text, and here I don't see too much explaining. This is one of the data validations that are self-explanatory. So the important thing is that in the question you use it is very clear what is yes and what is no. Okay, and here you could say you can only use the checkbox and cannot input any other value if you want. The other thing is I prefer to use to reject the input. It doesn't make much sense to show a warning, to, to let people write other things that true or false or yes or no or just check or uncheck. So if you try, if I choose that option, if I try to write anything else, it says there was a problem. Just check it or not check it. That's it. Okay, 
Finally, what I wanted to show you is a couple of tricks. The first thing is that uh, in the format, what can you do with the format? You could just by, let's close this, by increasing the text, the, the font size, you can have a smaller or, or larger button. So this looks cool. Then you could also put the background and you could also work with the color of the font. The color of the font will be the color in the, of this box. So you could try different things, okay? You could try mixing the background and the four color to do nice things. This is, there is not much more you can change. For example, the alignment. You could align to the right, to the left, or to the bottom, and that's it. Anything else, it won't have any this uh, bold, this uh, italic, this text rotation, won't have any effect. If I change this for a different font, it also won't change anything or the format just the color and the size that's it and the alignment okay perfect now some tips first tip is that you can click or unclick with spacebar so here i click and unclick easily okay the second one is that you can click and unclick a selection so you can select all of these hit spacebar and select them all and hit spacebar again and unselect them all okay so i'm going to do a selection and i'm going to hit spacebar and what this will do is that it will check all of them and if i hit again it will uncheck all of them by default it will check so for example if i have even if i have all of these checked except the last one and i hit space it will finish checking up and once all of them are checked if i hit again then it will switch to unchecked okay this is it basically this is what checkbox means we could work with google apps script using this check and uh, for example there are things we cannot do without a script for example there are people that have this yes and no for example and we have these two and they want that if i check this one this remains unchecked and if i check this one this goes out like a unique option question mark, more or less. This cannot be done without Google Apps Script. I could use the values, for example, to adding up how many checkboxes are there, as I showed you at the middle of this video, using ones and zeros, using uh, functions as, as sum, count, sum if, count if. You can count the values and know how many. For example, if you have in a row, I don't know, four or five, checkbox and you want to know how many are checked it's as easy as doing a sum if or count if yes or better yet easier yet changing the the default the value checked one and the value unchecked zero and then you can add them up as i showed you okay we could do a couple of projects putting into practice the checkbox if you want just give me some ideas and we could do that if not thank you so much for watching until now Thanks a lot to my Patreons. Their support is really, really great. And if you want to support me, you can go to the Patreon page, have the free template, or you can subscribe to the channel below and hit the notifications button so that you get noticed every week when there's a new video. Thank you so much. See you next time.